The chipping concept that made me turn pro. This is something I was taught a couple of years ago that allowed me to gain the confidence and the ability that I needed to go out and practice low, mid, and high shots without having to worry about duffing or filling the golf shots. This is literally a chipping swing that I'm going to teach you right now to help you play these three different shots and gain so much confidence around the green so you can lower your scores and play better golf. So just before I learned this concept that made me turn pro, I was really suffering around the greens, especially from those flat bare lies, that linksy lie that you would get time to time around the green and you couldn't really play that bump and run shot. I was seeing a lot of thin shots and then I'd try and play it in the back of my stance, but then I'd hit the leading edge, duff the shot and it would go a mile. So I decided to cure this problem. And when I say cure this problem, obviously you go for a golf lesson time to time, don't you? When you go through different discoveries and go, oh my gosh, you know, the wow facts that you get from a new lesson. Well, I actually got that again and I hadn't had that for a very, very long time. I was playing shots from around the greens, playing them higher, playing them lower, playing the medium flights and I was actually telling people what flight I was going to play. And this concept has stuck with me since the teaching professional down here at the golf projects, down at Lim Golf Club, but also where I was based at Delamere Golf Club. I was telling every single player this concept, whether you're amateur, whether you're pro or beginner as well. The first thing that we looked into changing was the ball position itself. So we ensured that with the ball position, we were more in the middle of the stance with our feet aiming directly towards our target. So to do this dead simply, all we had to do was put our feet together, club face pointing towards your target. Then we're going to take our feet about two to three inches apart either side. So it's a very small stance because it's a very small swing. So you're staying stable. It's a little bit more from the upper body on a chip shot as opposed to getting the lower body involved as well. So from this point here, obviously I was very much having the shaft angle too far forward. So we went and encouraged the butt end of the club to be pointing more towards my belt buckle. This was gonna help me increase the lofter impact and play those higher golf shots. I was still holding the face a little bit, but I was getting the better strike. But we didn't stop there. We had a look at a couple of other things as well. One in particular was the release pattern. So my release pattern beforehand on a chip shot was very much hands ahead of the club face at impact and trying to encourage more like an Alex Norum finish like this here, where the butt end of the club would be staying in front of my body. The idea of a chip shot is we want to be ensuring that throughout the swing that the butt end of the club here is always going to point at the belt buckle. So as a dress is pointing at the belt buckle. And then from here, we're ensuring that as we take the club head back and through, it's always going to point to the belt buckle. So this helped me gain even more height, better ball striking, using more of the bounce on a chip shot, just like this one. And you could hear the difference in the sound. It was more like this action on the way through as opposed to a chopping action. We were scooping the ball up in the air as opposed to chopping down on the golf ball. If we chop down, imagine the distance between the club and the ball it makes it very difficult for strike. But if we're using the bounce more, we've got more time, more room to be able to strike the ball more effectively, gaining more consistency from doing this as well. Another thing we looked into was tempo. So my tempo was very much off when I was swinging too much on the inside, hot in the face, I'd go slow and then quick. If I went a bit too far, I'd decelerate, stop on it, duff the shot. We developed the feeling of relaxing the hands a little bit more throughout the swing, ensuring that button of the club is pointing at the belt buckle, but letting the weight of the club do the work. You've obviously heard before, let the club do the work, but I'm telling you the weight of the club. And when I say the weight, I mean the club head itself. So I'm just going to place the club like this here. I've got my forefinger and my thumb on the top of this here. What's gonna happen now, if I move, this club here and I let go. We're gonna find that it's going to drop like this here due to gravity, right? Gravitational forces bringing the club back down to impact. What happens then if I do the same action, but then I push the club head as well? Manipulates the club face, manipulates the low point, so where the club reaches the lowest point in relation to the ground, affecting the strike, consistency. Doing this action and manipulating that club face, it's not gonna give us the very best of results. So. We tried to develop an understanding of where the club head was throughout my chipping swing. In order to do this, what I found most relatable is that when I make my chipping swing back and forth, you can see I have a little bit of a pause at the top. And it's not me feeling like I'm pausing at the top. I'm feeling the weight of the club bringing the club head back down. So I've done the work nice and smoothly 
up to wherever it may be that you're trying to feel on the chip shot, how far back you should go to get it to where your target is. If we try and feel the weight of the club, bringing the club head back down through impact. We're not gonna forward the hands and thin the golf shot. We're not gonna duff the shot. We're gonna be using more of the bounce, better release, keeping that butt end of the club pointing at the belt buckle throughout your swing. You can see there, there was a little bit of acceleration on the way through. I know I've overhit that chip shot a little bit more just to exaggerate and show you what I was feeling, but we noticed how quickly that ball stopped. So that's something to really consider you working on feeling the weight of the club taking the club head back and through an easy way to do it is feeling it in one hand doing one-handed chipping swings if you take the club head back here and let the club release on the way through i'm not forcing it like this i'm literally just going back wait for it okay now gravity is forcing the club back down through impact and you're just following it, guiding this club head back to the golf ball. As I started to implement this, I was thinking, right, okay, this is great. I'm getting a little bit more height, but what happens if I need to play one lower because of the wind? What happens if I want to play one higher because I'm trying to hit over a bunker? If I was trying to play this shot more lower, there's only one thing I would need to change in my setup that I would need to change to make sure I can hit them a little bit lower, maybe see a little bit more rollout. All we changed was the ball position from seeing it in the middle of the stance, we shuffled the ball slightly more in the back of the stance, having the butt end of the club pointing at the belt buckle still, as opposed to forward in the hands. I'm just going to the same swing, maybe a bit slower, a bit shorter, just to allow for the more rollout I'm going to get on this 20 yard chip shot. You can see there, more rollout, nice lower flight. For the higher chip shot, all we did was obviously, we placed it in the middle to start off with, brought it more towards the lead heel for a right-handed golfer like myself, very similar to a driver shot. And we also tilted the shaft angle a little bit further back like this here. So it's continuing to point at my belt buckle. And the idea is that when we make this swing, returning that back to pointing towards the belt buckle, the club head itself is actually going to be a little bit more ahead of the hands at impact to increase the loft. And then we're still following through as normal, keeping that butt end of the club pointing towards the belt buckle. And the idea is I'm just going to make that swing feel the weight of the club, probably do a little bit of a bigger swing just to encourage more height on this one and get more spin, hopefully, on this shot. But feel and allow the club head to return back to the point where it was at address. And you can see there, we're just allowing that club head to release through like so. We're not releasing it by rotating the hands over and seeing the club face pointing towards the ground. We want to see the club face continuing to point more towards the target and at yourself as you make your way into the top of your swing. So it's back and forth, feel the weight of the club and allow the club to release. So there you go. I was able to hit it very nice and high, get a load of check and control from this, which makes it so much easier for me. You saw how slow I was able to swing, but yet to get so much spin. Swinging slow, swinging easy, easy Ernie, take it into chipping, allow the club to release in the way through and see more spin as soon as the ball lands. So go ahead, give us a try, comment down below so let me know what you would like to see next. I understand a lot of you wanted to see a chipping video, so I hope this has helped you. We'll see you in the next video.